soil, a combination of organic material and minerals. Farming, the business of growing crops. To our beautiful Central Valley, rich with its agricultural history, these two things are its lifeblood. In our next Valley Recollections video series, we interviewed Gerald and Winona Leone, whose family has been farming in the Central Valley since 1899. Five generations of family has farmed on the same property. Let's watch their family history come alive before your eyes. Hi, this is Andrew with Hanford Auction House. Today we're with one of our special interview tours with our special guest here today, who we're gonna have introduced to you right now. Hi, I'm Winona Leone, and uh, we've been here for 32 years, and he's third generation farmer on this ranch, and then we have two other generations with us today too. Hi, I'm Gerald, and I was born up the road here just a little ways, and uh, lived here for a long time and then left for a while and like Winona says we've been back 32 years. So let's get down to the basics. Why did your family choose this spot of all places? That's a real good question. They come from Switzerland and I don't know why they came here. Uh, my grandfather on the other side stopped up Santa Rosa area up north, and it seems like that's pretty nice country up there. Why he come down here in the desert, I don't know. But my other grandpa, the Leone, came down here, and well, they had dairy here, and his brother had dairy right there across the street. But why they came to here, I don't know. <laughs> in fact, I think you're the oldest Swiss person in this area now. I could be. Yeah. I could be. So how big is the property here? There's 160 acres here. Then we have another ranch up here west of Burrow. What year was the house built? Whenever they bought this piece of ground, the original part of the house that we're looking at right there was here and so I don't know just how old it is but then they built on as the family grew. Well grandma and grandpa bought it from my understanding he worked for the people that lived here and then he had the opportunity in March 1, 1899 he bought the property okay. and uh, he and grandma were married. They came over at separate times from Switzerland that they came and they were, were married and started a family right here, so yeah. What year did you guys get married? 1963. We've been married uh, 58 years, 59 years in December. So have you guys lived in the, the valley your whole life or did you guys move out of the valley? Been here all, we lived in, in Layton and Hanford and here. Okay. Just three places in our life. We didn't go very far. Yeah. So this is the community you plan to stay with. Right, Yeah. right. Because this is where he wanted to come back home to. After his father passed away, we decided, okay, we will come here. And we, in fact, our son Shane helped renovate the house uh, because it was no electricity in the, just like one socket in the walls and one light hanging. And because uh, his dad used to sit and watch TV that was plugged into the ceiling, to, into the one light socket, you know. And, he didn't want to spend any money to fix it, you know, so. <laughs> it was just him he living just, here, you he know. He just left it, so. Yeah, we did uh, electrical, plumbing, and foundation, uh, foundation and yeah. oh, we did all kinds of things. And you really resurrected the home then. Yeah, yeah we, we wanted it to stand, you know, rather than anybody can build a new house, but you can't build an old house. How have you seen the farming community in the valley grow in your lifetime? There used to be a lot more cattle around here and dairies, there's little dairies everywhere. There's one, there's one there, there's one there. And 
that's just right here. And there was different ones around all through this area. And as the small dairies, you know, went down, cotton come along, cotton was king. There was cotton everywhere around here. Cotton is gone now, some on the west side, but trees have come along, trees and vines. And so as you can see, there's pistachios and almonds and... What was the first thing your family farmed on the property? Dairy. Dairy, and then they, they raised alfalfa for the feed the cows. Yeah, that's why we have all that old rakes and, and machines, milking machines and all that stuff was from what they did. So how did each generation improve the farm with, with, their, with different technology from there? How would you say they added to it? I really don't know except that uh, maybe more mechanization you know, did away with the horses and went to tractors and that kind of thing. Because you can do a whole lot more work with a tractor than you can with a couple of horses. And there's a, a couple of old tractors out there that were bought in the, in the 30s. And there used to be one right over here, uh, International made of Mogal. And that was in the teens. Wow. 1950 to 15 to 19, I think. And uh, some guy come along and my dad sold it. And uh, it was iron wheel and burned on kerosene and that sort of thing. I think we've improved our farming techniques too because like our grandson went to college, took up the crop science and all the you know mechanics and how to improve and we're lucky he came back to the ranch to to his heritage actually with him being the fifth generation down wow. fifth generation to farm uh-huh yeah his grandfather his father gerald our son shane and our grandson matthew so yeah what was the farm like when you were growing up here the biggest thing i remember was the dairy because I, like I said, I was born up here about two miles. And uh, then whenever I got, of course, big enough to know, you know, what, what was going on, dairy is what we had. And uh, I could milk a cow, got before I went to school. And I started grammar school, I was five years old. But I knew how to milk and feed the calves and and get the hay off of the stack and, and feed the cows and all that sort of thing. And we had 200 acres up here that my dad sold and uh, we would haul the hay up there to feed the, the dry stock, you know, whenever they weren't milking. And uh, the way we got them up there was drive them right out to the road and up there and up Elkhorn and up the way. You couldn't drive cattle down <laughs> Elkhorn Avenue now, they'd run over you. <laughs> In those days, we did it. What was the community outside the farm like when you were growing up? Actually, I, you know, I don't remember dances or anything like that. We, we didn't do that. My grandmother, the only thing she did was milk cows. She didn't, she'd go to Fresno about once a month and that was about it. My dad, he'd go to Riverdale and, and up here to the store and uh, just things like that. But as far as doing something, you know, like now we belong to, you know, different organizations and that kind of stuff, they didn't belong to anything. His grandfather though, was one that established the first bank in Riverdale. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, he was part of that, yeah. Yeah, he was one of the founders uh, of that bank. It has changed its name about three or four times since then to what it is now. What was the original name of the bank? I think it was First Western. I'm not sure. Yeah. We have the books, but we haven't looked at them in a while. Yeah. And he, he was uh, part of the people that started the creamery down there, too. Really? Mm -hmm because they would take the, the milk from here down to Riverdale and, uh, 
and part of the old creamery building is oh it's kind of there but it's not it's been a Ford garage for years and years that's like up here too there's a little elementary school and his grandfather was one of the first board members when the school opened. It was the Guglielmoni side. That was on my mother's side. Yeah, the Guglielmoni. They were from Switzerland too. And Gerald now is on that school board and has been on that school board for 30 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he followed in his grandpa's footsteps. He became a board member up there. I need to get off though. They need some younger people on there. <laughs> How has your experience in the valley been like? I was raised on a dairy farm too. My, my parents, we were from Layton, and uh, they had a dairy and we had, uh, we raised hay and we did go through the cotton time also. And then dad planted trees. But yeah, I started milking cows when I was about 11, 12. And that's where I learned to drive was on a hay truck. <laughs> Back then, now you can't do that kind of stuff, but. Yeah, and then I lived there till I married him. We were 20 when we got married, but yeah. So you've been farming your whole lives here in the right. valley. Well, when we moved to Hanford, he um, went to work. Implement Massey Ferguson dealer. Implement company. Yeah, so actually I worked, my whole life has been ag related. Raised here until I was 10 or so. And then I went to work in Hanford and worked 17 years in Hanford. And then I went to work on a, on a ranch out northeast of Hanford out there. We farmed oh, 13, 1400 acres. And I worked there until I worked for People's Ditch Company. And I worked five years for them. And then come out here. Now I wanted to get off the farm. So I went to college and I got out of college. In fact, I stopped college on Friday and started work on Monday at the phone company. And I worked uh, 26 years for the phone company. And then I moved over to an elementary school, was the secretary, and then when we got out here, our accountant called me and offered me a job. I worked 10 years there, but came back out here and my son was surprised that I knew how to set siphons because he didn't know me as a farmer until we got here. And I said, oh, mom, you do know farm, <laughs> you know, so, yeah. So it's in our blood. We were very active in sports. I coached my son in the league, and I coached, and our daughter, uh, softball. And then we had a women's team that he coached and, and we worked all the time. So we were very busy as, as young married families, you know. Yeah. And then my son has carried that on too. He got out here and he coached high school football and baseball and he coached the little borough school when our grandson was there. And so sports has been a big part of our life too. How do you think your family's impacted the community around you? Yeah, I don't know. I hope good. <laughs> we have some very good friends that live out here in this community. Yeah, we have good neighbors. Yeah, you know, uh, we know them all, you know, and um, we have some friends that come over two or three times a week and visit, you know, or they go visit them and they're, they're local too. And then we have Saturday morning breakfast with another real good friend of ours that's been here a long, long time too. Yeah, they've been here longer than we have. 1886, I yeah. think, the Schultz family, they still farm up here. In fact, what's uh, kind of ironic, the property that they bought was a property that his grandpa Guglielmoni had when he came to this area, and he built this huge barn that was put together with bolts. It's bolted together in spots, yeah. And he built it about 1903. Yeah, now somewhere Schultz in there. Now Schultz have it. They've renovated, and it's a you can have venues. It's a party barn now. They put yeah. weddings on oh, yeah. there, and she called it the 1903 barn. What's your earliest memory? It doesn't have to be related to the farm. Just earliest overall. 
Now, I can remember when I was four years old walking around here. I don't know, I wasn't doing much, but I do remember being four years old. You used to ride around with old Doc. He was a, a oh, yeah. crippled guy that couldn't walk and he would drive um, a pickup and they would feed the cows. Well, Gerald would get in the back and shove the hay off for old yeah, Doc. His name was Walter Wakefield and he came from Michigan and he was crippled. He walked around with a cane. He was very loyal to his grandmother. Yeah. He, he was here all he, our life that we knew right. him. He took know. her wherever she wanted to go and uh, he and I fed the cows and fixed the fence and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I, I learned a lot of things from him. Some of the bad words I learned from him. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't and, know that. <laughs> oh yeah, things like that, you know, because I, I was only I don't know, eight, nine years old or whatever, you know. And in fact, there's a, an old shack out there, I call it Doc's Cabin. That's where and, he lived. And <laughs> yeah, he lived there. He didn't have any heat, you know, and electricity. Nothing, you know, he just, he just lived there. What's your earliest memory? Oh gosh, probably uh, setting siphons and milking cows on the farm that my dad had in Layton there. My mom was one of seven children. Wow. And they all lived close by in Layton and we were a very close-knit family. We still are, because we have a family reunion out here at the ranch every year, Labor Day, and we've had Oh, anywhere from 70 to 110 people come. We put up tables and just have a picnic here. And you certainly have the space for it. Right, right. And we've done that ever since my grandparents were alive. And, and they've been gone a long time now, but just trying to keep the family together. And we had a little get together here, I don't know, two or three weeks ago, and a bunch of outlaws showed up. <laughs> Nancy was one of Nancy them. Nancy was one of them. <laughs> And her sisters, and oh yeah, we just had sets of tables up here. It was it was some of the kids that that was in her class. Yeah, we graduated together, and, uh, so. so that was good. What was high school like for you guys? Oh, I couldn't wait to play baseball and football and chase the girls. <laughs> so, and he caught one. <laughs> and I caught one. That one. <laughs> we were in high school together. That's when we started dating. Yeah. And oh, we we good had, memories. Yeah, good memories. Good memories of high school, I guess. And the little town of Layton, I don't know if you've been to Layton. Yeah. Okay, we, we walked from school down to the, we called it the pool hall, and which it was, a pool hall, and they served hamburgers and stuff yeah. like that. And So every day at noon, we'd go down there and... But yeah, good memories, good memories of our friends. That's how I knew Nancy and her sister Pat and Susie, because we went to school together and uh, their father and my father was on the school board. In fact, her <laughs> sister Susie was my son's soccer coach. Really? So oh, yeah. that's how far back we go. Oh, wow. he loves Susie. <laughs> also, I think uh, Susie was um, uh, um, in the office that gave first aid to people, and he was her staff. He helped her. That was one, was it your senior year? He helped Susie with first aid to you know, he liked to wrap the girls' ankles and stuff like that. <laughs> also, well, of course. He also did that as one of his electives. Uh, the basketball players, you know, the girls, he, he was their, I can't remember what you call them, a trainer. He was their trainer. So anyway, yeah, it's been a good life. Good life. What would you say is your fondest memory of your parents? Hmm. Gosh, I don't know. My mother was a good cook. Excellent. Yeah, that's uh, probably the the fondest memory. Then when she married your stepdad, that was a very positive thing. Right. My stepdad was a he was a retired out of the navy and uh, he come to town up here and bought uh, there's there's a store up here in Burrow and that was a bar. Yeah. And he bought this bar because one of his shipmates worked for the ranch across the street there. And that's how he got here. And then he and my mother got together, and then we moved down the other side of Riverdale. But uh, he was he was very positive and into sports of any kind and, and history. Uh, 
He was yeah. a history buff. History buff and that kind of thing. And, uh, and military, he loved the military. Yeah. Of course, he spent 22 years in, in the Navy. In fact, he was in China. He was during World War II, and then he lived out in China. And then he came here, and uh, the, the two, two brothers, he was a dad to them, a really good dad to them, and uh, gave them positive feeds and stuff like that. But. What's the fondest memory of your parents? My parents love. They, they always loved us. I, I never felt bad. I had an older brother and a younger sister. And to this day, there's still love uh, with the three of us. Um, very, got along good. We had good friends in Layton that we grew up with, and that was the love, and it was shared with the community and stuff. Anybody you ask that was out in that area, and you said, did you know Bernard Ritchie? Oh, yes, good Bernard. You know, he was well thought of in the community, and that made me feel really good, too. Proud, proud to be his daughter. My grandmother probably was the the one that I missed the most and probably loved the most. She just, I don't know, uh, she just liked me. She spoiled you. <laughs> yeah, I guess. And uh, I just, uh, I think about her every day. Yeah, he, he'll do something on the ranch and he'll say, I wonder what Grandma Leone would think of this, <laughs> you know, because we kept it and uh, like I said, it's it's three generations down now that we have it, and it's wonderful. It just makes us feel really good. But, yeah. Thank you for listening to our second in our Valley Recollections video series. We hope you enjoyed it and listen in again next time. Build a fire and yeah. turn it and make the heat. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's some brand marks. Yes. Some oh, the original yeah. brands we've had around here. Yep. Oh, on the back of the door? Yeah, there's yeah. a little bit here. The original brand was uh, ZL. That was for his right? grandmother. Oh, yeah. Wow. Zorinda oh, Leone. This, the ZL, is the brand we still use. That's so cool. Actually, you still got the original brand, the one that uh, you place in the fire and let it warm it up. We've still got that somewhere. It's in your building, or is it, has it always been here? This one? No, this one. This one. This one's the one that used to sit over in front of the oh, car. This was the smoke, smoke shop. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. They'd hang meat in there and what have you, and I don't know how that part works, but that outhouse is not old though. I built that. Yeah. That thing's net for me. Yeah, I was down there in Solvang and they were selling them down there for, I don't know, three or four hundred dollars. And I said, why? Wow, I can build one of those. And, and that's, a, a, that's a chopper right there. That's a hay chopper. Threw the hay on there and it chopped it up and blew it in a pile. And I was telling you about the, the original barn. That's the original milk house. Really? Yeah. Matter of fact, we just propped that one up here six months ago. And the original barn was back there and the cows had come in right here, go in and be milk, yeah. and then they'd go out, right out that way, mm -hmm. past the tool carrier and out to, because there were stanchions up here, and they'd go up there and eat, and then out to the pasture or wherever they'd go. Yeah. Yeah, this is a modern dairy barn in 1935. 1935 modern dairy barn, <laughs> I yep. think so. <laughs> if, I, if I've heard the stories no. correct. Really? Wow, this is now, I think he said there was 16 cows. Those are milking machines okay. right there. Scrapers, spring tooth, plows. This is, we call it a ridger. You make borders. Yeah. Um, mowing machine, that's how you used to cut the hay. That's a cultivator, mm -hmm. cotton and corn. This is all um, horse-drawn stuff. Yeah. That's the original, pretty much the kitchen right there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you can really see, but see where the, the edges of the boards are? Yeah. That's where the wall was, that was a bedroom. Wow, what? Mm -hmm. 
And actually, the bathroom on the other side, that was actually outdoor. You had to go yeah. out that door and go to use it. And what, what was this room original here as well? Uh, this was added on later, but yeah. it is the next oldest section. Okay. On uh, 6th Street. Mm -hmm. And the old boy, when he, we had to have a mainspring put in it. Yeah. And when he took it apart to put the mainspring in, he says that the town inside is spelled different now than it was then. Yeah. And that was prior to 19, or uh, mm -hmm. well, 18, prior to 1900. Yeah, because this is 1880 when that was established. Yeah, so just how old it is, I don't know. Or we don't know. And it's bolted to the wall so it won't fall. Oh, yeah. Oh, I but didn't it, I remember seeing that. It was hanging there when I was just a little guy, and it hung there for a long time before that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool.